Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a few beautiful blooms on my plants. And also, I'm going to be reupholstering this chair. I have a drop cloth on it right now, just because I was seeing how things would fit into it. And I'm liking it a lot, but I need to put on some batting to smoothen out the back here. And who knows, we might end up doing more things, but I mostly wanted to show you the blooms and how this chair is coming along. So we shall start with the blooms first, and then I'll work on my chair. <laughs> so this is a little lipstick plant that is blooming. You can see that it's a mini lipstick plant. And there's a flower underneath here in full bloom. I love that color in there. It's so beautiful. And then here are a couple that are getting ready to bloom. You've seen these blooms before, but the Umka is getting ready to bloom for like the fourth or fifth time this winter, ever since it's been inside. It just blooms constantly. It blooms a lot outside too during the summer. It's just always blooming. Umka is actually a medicine that you use the root for. It's very, very bitter and it's supposed to help you get over sicknesses quickly. And then you saw in my last video, this echinacea is blooming. It's so beautiful. I love how they bloom from the bottom up and they just last so long that way. It's beautiful. Lastly, here's my Pilea mollis and it has such beautiful, tiny, delicate blooms. They are just lovely. I really like them a lot. These flowers bloom the next day and they just smell so good. They almost have like a chocolatey floral smell. They're really wonderful. And as you can see, they're so dark. Sometimes they're a little bit more of a burgundy color, but right now they're blooming like this black color. It's beautiful. First, I am adding some batting so that way it smoothens out all of the lumps with the cushions. So that way, when I add the drop cloth later, it will look really smooth and nice and there won't be any lump. So now I'm adding the staples, of course, to staple everything on. And I was having a hard time with this wood. It was very hard wood. It was kind of a pain in the butt and it got even worse, but the first side was not too bad. So. I am cutting everything to fit. When you are doing reupholstering, you want to make sure that you cut everything bigger than what you need because you want to have plenty of fabric to work with because otherwise you're going to end up with some weird areas that aren't going to look so nice and it's kind of like wrapping a present. If you're good at wrapping presents, you'd probably be good at this. As long as, you know, you do everything right, like right here, I fold it up so that way if I needed to do any fabric to pull through on the bottom, I could tack it down on the other side. Because see right here with the arm, I pulled it through on one side and so now when I'm doing the arm on the other side, there's still a spot for me to tack it on. So yeah, you just need to make sure that you're not tacking things in the wrong spots. So right here I'm pulling it up, so that way if I needed to tack anything down at the bottom part, I could still pull things through. If you do mess up on that, it's not a big deal. You can always go back and undo the staples and tack it some other spot <laughs> where it actually is supposed to be. So I'm just working this fabric around on here and putting it on. If I had known that my initial thing with the actual things are supposed to go on the front of the chair. I didn't end up using them because they looked horrible. If I had known that I wasn't going to end up doing that, then I would have actually just pull, pulled these and made them look better without stapling them all and going through this whole hassle of the tacks. So see that right there? Ugh, it turned out so bad. So I took that off and I ended up replacing it with just fabric. But if I had known that that wouldn't have worked out, then I would have just pulled the fabric differently and not even worried about it. But here I am actually sewing this fabric on because I didn't want to replace the whole bottom layer of this because it was still in good condition and it didn't need to be replaced. It just needed to be a matching fabric to the rest of my chair. So I just went ahead and sewed this on. I should have used an upholstery needle, but I didn't think about that until doing this voiceover. So I am actually just using my pliers to help me pull 
the needle through and so I kind of felt like a surgeon putting stitches in which was kind of fun. <laughs> I did use upholstery thread though and then I just stapled it tight and then folding it over over here I did use more thread to help hold it in place and then later on I did hot glue it a little bit more to help it stay down better but that way I didn't have any text showing right there and I didn't have to worry about the legs getting in the way or anything and it worked out pretty nice. So now I'm working on the other side and this side I don't have a ton of footage for because it was being such a pain in the butt. So anyways, I cut the fabric wrong a couple of times and then I didn't have enough fabric because the drop cloth that I bought to go along with my first drop cloth didn't match it and so yeah, it was not the best thing but I ended up making it work and it looks fine. It's just a little bit weird in the sort of edge part where the armrest meets the side of the chair. But otherwise it turned out good and I'm pretty happy with it, except that the staples just would not go through. The staples were just so awful. So I was able to staple this drop cloth on okay-ish, but I was having quite a bit of problems. But yeah, I decided to take a break after adding a little bit more fabric and I decided to watercolor so that way I could de-stress a little bit because this chair was getting to me. <laughs> so I like to watercolor in this watercoloring book lately. This is the first watercolor coloring book that I've got and it's so much fun. I got this actually at Hobby Lobby. They don't have it with their other coloring books. They have it over in this weird makeup sort of section. Anyways, it's a really fun coloring book. I'll put a link to this coloring book in the description box where you can find it on Amazon. There's also a second one to this coloring book as well and it's just so much fun and it's not expensive either. You can use markers with this or regular color pencils, although I don't like how the regular color pencils really turn out on the watercolor paper. So I like using my watercolor coloring pencils and then I use water to blend it through and I have a few different little techniques that I've been using for it so that way I can get the right shadows and things and I just love how it's been working. Like I'll use the water from the lightest spot into the darker spots so that way I can keep more of the shadows or I'll go from the darker spot to the lighter spot so that way you know everything blends in more. With this dove I added a little bit of you know more tan colors to it and just some little spots and some purple and it turned out so pretty up close. I love it. I am using some pan watercolors for these hydrangeas because I like my flowers to be very loose and free, especially with the hydrangeas. I love it when they're just regular watercolors because then I can have the colors all blending together more and looking more loose and free. I don't know, that's just my favorite way to do hydrangeas. And I did layer several layers of the same color on here. I did darken the color a little bit every time I used it and blended it out so that way I got a little bit of a gradient. I love to do my flowers that way and if I can use more than one color in a flower, I'm even happier. I love the way that watercolor does eyes because I love the way that I can get eyes to have such beautiful reflections with the watercolor. I've gotten to where I can get some good highlights in there and I just love how they turn out. It's just so much fun. I have really loved this a lot. Except I wasn't that keen on this hummingbird. It was kind of a bit of a pain. I think it's mostly just because I didn't want that bold of color in this. So I did try to take it a little bit lighter to keep it in more of a pastel sort of a color scheme to go with the flowers more and everything else. I was wanting to keep her hair white and maybe adding some more shadows to it. But I decided that since the hummingbird was so bold that I should make her hair actually blonde. I was thinking about something else but I decided that blonde would be nice. That way I wasn't adding too much of any kind of crazy colors and that would keep everything nice and light. And I did use several different colors in her hair too just so that way there was some extra texture to there I suppose and you could get a little bit of feel for some shadows. And I always color the eyebrows too. I cannot handle it when the eyebrows are not the right color. And I always take my black pencil and I outline the eyes too. 
I did some outlining on the birds as well so that way they would show up and their feathers would be more apparent, especially on the dove. I wanted the dove to be really bold and just there. It reminded me of those Victorian hats and I just love this dove in this picture. For the back, I used one staple and then I used tacks for all four corners and I stapled the bottom. So I got it all nice and straight and then I hot glued everything. So that way I didn't have to use tack strips or any kind of trim to hide the staples. I really like how it turned out using the hot glue. It had nice clean lines and I didn't have to have any kind of weird bulkiness or anything and it was so easy because I'm not a professional at this obviously <laughs> and it was just for my own living room so yeah it turned out great other than where the staples wouldn't go through but that's another story well I'm basically done other than these kind of parts I'm not sure if I want to go ahead and keep putting the little nails in there but I'll have to either get a spacer for these or mark them out or something or I was thinking I could see if I can find it when they're like all the tacks are put together but this is the side where there isn't any and I think that it looks fine and because it was really hard to get those even and I was getting frustrated so that's the only thing that I haven't finished yet other than the cushion I haven't gotten around to sewing a cover for it yet but until then this is so much easier just to leave it like that. And I'm also thinking about maybe painting the legs. I'll at least shine them up and uh, give them some good waxing so that way they look prettier, not so scruffy. But I love the color of it. I just think that it looks really nice. And that will not be as wrinkled once I can pull it tight, of course, and everything. The only thing is that this arm looks better than this arm. I, I don't know why I ended up with this so wrinkly. I was getting very frustrated on this side because the wood on this side is really hard. Uh, so you can see I wasn't able to get it quite as tight through there just because I was having such a hard time getting the staples to actually go into the wood. It was extremely frustrating. But the shape of this is so nice at the top. And it's a very, very comfortable chair, so I'm very happy with it. And then over here, I just added some of these on this side, just like on the other side, it's like this as well. And I just hot glued all along this, which I am so grateful that I live in a world where hot glue exists, <laughs> because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this without tacks. So, and I'm glad that I didn't have to stick anything else into this wood. It was such a pain. I added tacks over here on this arm and I need to go ahead and do that on the other side. You can see here that this doesn't look as tidy as I would like just because I could not get the staple gun to go through. So my husband has an air staple gun, whatever, um, for like compressed air. So I'm going to try that once he gets it out to use it for something. And that should probably actually go through, thankfully, because this is um, kind of annoying. <laughs> but now I'm done with this, and so I can go ahead and put it in my living room and make it look all pretty in there and have a blanket on it. It's such a comfortable chair. I am definitely going to be sitting in this chair a lot because it's really, really comfortable. I actually got a new filter for the fish tank, and so it sounds more like a waterfall, and I really like it. Um, I probably should have turned it off, but I don't like to turn it off, and it's not this annoying buzzing air bubbler anymore so I'm leaving it on so that's what you hear in the background and I really like it having a little bit of a water feature kind of thing in my house I gotta go make a cake now and also I need to clean up my house a little bit but the cakes needs to be made first cakes are of the utmost importance <laughs> I hope you guys have a really great week and I will talk to you later bye